We are living in the future. Okay, there are fewer flying cars, moon colonies, and jetpacks than I imagined when I was 10, but we're still surrounded by technology, which pretty recently seemed like it could only exist in the realm of science fiction. And the most prominent example of this is computers we can talk to. Speech recognition has come a long way since its first incarnation in 1952, but progress has been surprisingly slow. Moving from recognizing individual words to full sentences took about 20 years, and honing that process to the point where it could be brought to the consumer market took almost another 20. But with modern advances in computing power, things have sped up a lot. In the launch of Google's voice search in 2011, and Apple's series shortly afterwards, signaled the beginning of a new era for this technology, an era that is now in full swing. It's estimated that as of 2020, there are as many as 4.2 billion voice assistant devices being used worldwide, and that number is expected to reach 8 billion by 2023. But their increased ubiquity and improved computing power doesn't mean a free ticket to unlimited progress. There are still a number of significant challenges facing this technology. But before we talk about those, we first need to know how speech recognition works. This is a spectrogram, a visual representation of the frequency content over time in an audio recording. This audio recording. The brighter the color, the higher the concentration of that particular frequency. For example, if I make a sound, you can see the concentration of higher frequencies here. And if I make an oo sound, you can see this blob of lower frequencies here. Linguists have been using spectrograms to analyze human speech for years, learning to recognize T's, B's, S's, vowel sounds, and even tell what someone is saying just from looking at the image. This is how speech recognition works. The computer splits the image up into slices, analyzes each slice, and compares it to a library of what it knows different sounds normally look like. It then works out what sound that slice is most likely to be and moves on to the next one. What's especially smart, though, is that it also factors in the analysis of previous slices, making judgments based on how words tend to be constructed. For example, if it's 90% certain this is a K sound, it's far more likely that this is going to be an A or an O than a J or a P. Now, looking at this process, it's easy to see why progress has taken some time. Most humans wouldn't have a hard time hearing the difference between the phrases, Hi, I'm Adam, and Hi, Madam, for example. We have a lifetime of experience, but the spectrograms for those two phrases are going to look pretty similar. And while modern services use machine learning to train themselves on every new piece of audio they receive, they haven't caught up yet. Still, the most advanced speech recognition systems today have got down to an error rate of around 11%, which is pretty impressive. So what's the problem? Well, it turns out that understanding what you've said is only half the battle. The really tough bit is working out what you meant. If I were to say, I closed the window in my room because it was too cold, most people would understand what I mean is, my room was too cold, so I closed the window. But it is ambiguous in that first sentence. Technically, I could be saying, the window was too cold, so I closed it. Humans understand the relationship between a cold room and an open window and that the phrase, it's too cold, refers to our general surroundings, and that the temperature of a window is no reason to close it. So we deduce the intended meaning fairly easily. Computers don't have any of that pre-existing knowledge, which makes a sentence like that very difficult to interpret. This kind of phrase is known as a Winograd schema, named for Professor Terry Winograd, who first addressed this issue in 1972. And while this is only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the problems computers have understanding natural speech, it does touch on the challenges that still lie ahead. And those challenges aren't only technical. There's the ethics involved in large companies using your voice recordings to enhance their AIs and making profit from the data sets they collect. Plus, there's the problem of trust. Many people still feel uneasy about welcoming these devices into their homes. How these issues will play out in the future remains to be seen. Both Amazon and Google have publicly said that their speech recognition systems are inspired by and aspire to one day emulate the Star Trek dream, a computer that understands natural speech and responds in kind. And while no one is yet close to realizing that dream, in a time when machine learning and AI are constantly redefining the boundaries of what's possible, it might not be that long before it's in reach.